Hey YouTube, Mark Kaufman here, and today I want to do something a little different. I want to go through the 19, uh, 1996 catalog from Rolex. Now you're asking, why do you have this catalog? Well, this catalog to me marks the heyday of Rolex for me, um, and it's also the Rolex that I grew up with. Um, I was born in the 90s, and when I thought Rolex, this is what I thought. I personally do not like their modern uh, watches, and I would actually prefer to own one of these watches more than anything else they produce now. So let's go through this catalog together. So let's take a look. And I'm going to try and hold this thing um, pretty steady, so if you wanted to read any of the information like this, um, you can do so, and I'll allow you to pause it as I go through, and I'll give you enough time to do so. So here's the oyster, the history behind that, and our table of contents. And our next page, which has some information, and of course the Rolex GMT. At the time, I don't think this was their highest selling model, but now Rolex only makes uh, this specific model in either their um, 904L steel or in white gold, which I believe the Coke, um, they haven't made a Coke yet, but they make the Pepsi and I believe they do that only in white gold. And then here is a little bit about their Rolex technology. It's just watchmaking. I mean, and I don't say quotation watchmaking, I'm saying quotation technology. Um, it's, it's watchmaking through and through. Um, a, a few things are new that they have uh, pioneered, but everything has pretty much stayed the same. And here we go. Rolex Oyster Collection. Now, as I go through this, I think I'm gonna point out one of, and let me take a quick sip of coffee here. I'm gonna just point out the one watch that I would buy, or if I'm not gonna buy any of them, I won't. I'll just tell you, no, these appeal to me. Um, but I'll let you know which one I would prefer to have in my collection. So out of all these, I'd actually prefer this one. Um, and this here is um, a very classy piece. This is definitely, definitely a classy piece. I prefer the Oyster bracelet over the Jubilee in two-tone. And then here are all of our day dates, or not day dates, date justs. And this is our Thunderbird um, with the rotating bezel that is in 18 karat gold. And this is your standard day, uh, date just with the Jubilee two-tone. Now this here is the Oyster Quartz. Um, Rolex doesn't make any of these anymore, but I have worked on a few and I have to say, they are wonderfully made quartz watches. Now, would I buy one? No, not really. Um, if I had to buy one of these on the page, I'd probably get the all steel. So here we go. And little known fact, they actually did make a few automatic models in this case. Those are actually very rare models and very sought after. Here's our gold series of, um, these are the day dates. And what really stands out to me right now is this one here with, and it looks like to me, um, rose gold, yellow gold, and then platinum. And then the outer of this is all platinum. So in, in the day date line, it is all made in precious metals. So if you ever come across a Rolex day date and it's stainless steel, you probably have a recased movement or you have a fake on your hands. And um, the only one here probably for me is this one, if I had to buy one. Ah, the sports models. Oh man. I actually, um, in the past, um, I actually have owned the 14060. And personally, that is the piece de resistance of uh, Rolex Submariners. It's the perfect modern day Submariner, and it has all the modern tools and attributes of the Sub, but it is simplified because it has no date, and it is just a fantastic piece. If I had to have one of these, it'd probably be that one because I used to own one. 
Oh, now this is interesting. So they, they, Rolex doesn't make this one anymore. Um, they, well, they don't make any of these anymore, but um, th this is the Pepsi. And as you can see, this catalog doesn't actually show any prices. And uh, it's a little unfortunate, but um, they, this is just a pamphlet you would get from a Rolex dealer. They would just let you know what they have available. And back in the day, you could actually buy Rolex sports watches. Um, now you can't even get any, really, um, unless they're on the gray market. But um, what I really like about this is here is the... Uh, root beer. This is known as the Clint Eastwood uh, Rolex also because he wore this kind of Rolex except with the Hesalite or plastic crystal um, and um, it was worn by Clint Eastwood in um, a few I believe of the Clint not Clint Eastwood, uh, um, Dirty Harry films. Uh, forgive me I'm stuttering over here. Let me take another sip of coffee and um Oh man, caffeine. <laughs> now, um, I do not know if these Daytonas are using any of the El Primero movements. I know there are tell signs, but I'm not that much of an expert in telling that. But the El Primero movement from Zenith, those Rolexes are fetching a lot of money nowadays. But if I had to have one of these on the page, it would probably be this one on the leather strap here. Now this are a few ladies watches and um what really stands out to me now this is a ladies watch this is the midsize now the midsize was actually a 34 millimeter case and so i mean nowadays that's pretty dang small but i would actually i've i've had a few vintage watches that were 34 33 millimeter cases and i feel they fit my wrist just fine if i had to get one of these it'd probably be this one what stands out to me on this page though is the fact they have a 14 or an 18 karat gold um i'm not sure if it's 14 or 18 i'm pretty sure it's 18 karat gold riveted bracelet and the riveted bracelet means that this has rivets and probably is a, an expansion style bracelet very surprising to see that in so late in rolex's history let's go to the next page wow 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 that is that, that immediately that's the one i would want but now this is the mid-size um yacht master and these are all the mid-size models. Now these are probably all 35 um, or 34 millimeter cases. These were considered to be men's watches um, and I still consider them to be men's watches. This Yacht Master in a mid-size case is probably equivalent to your modern day, well it used to be modern, uh, Tudor um, Submariner that was in its third, it, they call it a boy sized. Um, tutor, but that would probably be the same equivalent in size. But boy, is that a looker with that blue dial and red text there. Ah, oh, man, wish they'd bring that back. That's gorgeous. And now here's all of our ladies' models. Um, uh, you know, uh, they're ladies' Rolexes, and nowadays these can be had for not very much money. Really surprising. So if you wanted to get your lady love um, something interesting and something nice, this would be definitely it. Nothing there stands out to me. Now, one of the things is, is Rolex had this bracelet style for a long time. And um, I don't think these ever really sold very well. And um, the, they still make them and they're worth a lot of money, but they're not their highest selling model with this interesting bracelet. Rolex is really known for the president, Jubilee, and oyster, oyster style bracelets. And that seems to be it. Now here are the trademark names, and then here's some more info on the uh, Rolex jewelry store, their service, their warranty, and here we go, these are their locations. I'm pretty sure this is probably outdated, but if you wanted to take a look at where these are, you're more than welcome to. And there is the last page. And then of course there's our print date, 1996. So I hope you guys enjoyed this um, review of the Rolex 
catalog from 1996. If you did enjoy this, let me know down in the comments. And thank you so much for taking a look at my channel. Talk to you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.